welcome to another episode of The Global Game Pod, where we focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's football. What a goal from Ronaldo! It is absolutely magnificent! It is David Beckham! With Coach Rudy and friends, this is Global Game Pod. Let's do it. Yo, 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 what's happening, people? Welcome to another episode of the Global Gay Pod, brought to you by CKB Interiors. If you need a kitchen or a bedroom, make sure you visit their website. There we go again, another episode and another great guest. Um, this one, special, all the way out from Pittsburgh in America. So, big up the Global Game Pod, because now we're, going, we're actually going global. <laughs> um, He's a football agent, a representative of players, um, a representative of other 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 things as well in the future. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, he's Paris Nichelle, all the way out from Pittsburgh. Welcome to the Global Game Pod, man. Thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. It really means a lot. No, nah, no, pro- no problem at all. I mean, this is this is the point of this is to try and put people in the know. Um, about yeah. guys who are doing things within football. Uh, I never, ever in a million years thought I would be sitting down with a football agent. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I am. And uh, you've grown on me. I'll give you that much. You've grown on me. Um, I've been told I have that effect, so that's good. That's a good yeah. sign. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I mean, it, I think, and I'm sure you're going to go more in depth and tell us cool. about about what you do and, and how you yeah. got to doing it. But, I think personality plays a big, big part in what you do, and rapport is massively important. I appreciate, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, like I told you before, I mean, you know, my biggest thing is particularly when you're working with players, you know, you've got to have that relationship with the families or you know, with them, where you know they can talk to you about anything. You want to, you know, I think it's the one thing I learned early on is you can't be everyone's best friend. Obviously, mm. you can't be every player's best friend. Every player's personality is different, but you do want that, to, you know. God forbid the situation happens, but if they ever have something to talk to you about, if it's an emergency, if it's something that they can't talk to parents about, wives about, children about, you know, look, this has happened, I'm just in this situation. And you go, yeah, let's talk about it, what's happened? And you can give that objective third eye, you know, uh, about it. So that's what we're trying to do. And like I said, I appreciate you saying that I'm growing on you, so I must be doing something okay. So Yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. I mean, you, you've got great rapport. You, you bring a great personality to, to the table. And even though we've spoken from a million miles away, um, yeah. I think we will become friends in in a, in a short space of time, which is yeah, for sure, man. Touch wood. Yeah, it's definitely like I think like you said earlier on about this. You know, before we spoke before about Zoom. You know, still gives you the opportunity to at least do face to faces. You know, obviously, I'd prefer to have it in the room where we can you know bounce off the energy and you know have some food or whatever. But you know, it's 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 still it's still it's the next best thing. Yeah, hundred percent. So I always do this with all my guests. I like to go all the way back um, because I am sure. That you, your first first call in football wasn't to be a football agent. Um, I'm sure, like yeah. every, all of us, you wanted to play. Um, so, what, when does that start for you? How old were you, and uh, where were you playing? So you were yeah. obviously born in England, right? If I'm right. Yeah, yeah. So, born, I was born in Shrewsbury, uh, big up uh, out there, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, my, my, you know, I set. I was, grew up in Slough first. That's my first kind of memories of you know, growing up in Slough, and then I was about three, two or three years old, and my dad used to kind of give me. Football and you know I tried to do drop kicks and stuff like that and uh, I think the story that Dad's told me is basically that I was born right-footed and so because mm. the stability was on my right leg I used to swing my left at it by standing on my right so I actually ended up being left-footed growing oh, wow. up so I'm right-handed left-footed so I think I'm sure people have that same experience um, and then yeah I think I'm six or seven you know start playing properly in terms of going to Sunday League and yeah it's it's crazy because we've been you know staunch Liverpool fans growing up right you know massive massive Liverpool fans so the emotion was really brought in and you know uh, I think when I was yeah I want to say five or six I started playing like Sunday League and I think it probably wasn't until about 11 that I think I could do it you know mm. skinny Indian kid you know the usual stereotype usual story I'm always really quick but you know again not really understanding how to do it I think it was I must have been 12 or 13 I was like you know I, I want to do this. And I think it was a, a situation with my dad where, you know, both my parents, you know, and my siblings sacrificed a lot for my football career, you know, trying to get me to where I wanted to go. It was traveling with to, to away days in, you know, where it was Penn and Tyler's Green in England or something, or even here when 
I started playing when I moved over here and coming to America and trying to do all the, you know, America's huge. So doing all these different away games is you're not driving 20, 30 minutes, driving hours or even state, different states. So, um, but my first, the first time I got the kick up my bum was when I think I was 11 or 12. And, you know, I, I, was, I was being subbed on the pitch. I was 11. I was subbed on the pitch. And every time I played, like I would look out for my mom and dad and I get a smile. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, I remember playing so badly at 11 and I got subbed right back off about five minutes later. And uh, my coach at the time, actually, uh, Kevin Keane, who's, you know, a really well-known coach. He actually coached yeah. us in the Sunday League team. So he, again, he's another influence as well. Uh, and also my other coach, Roy McMillan, who's actually my partner now in what we do. He was my one of my first influential coaches as well. Um, and yeah, I came off and looked at my dad, not smiling. I was like, oh, I was like, what's going on? And so we get in the car and I just got this incredible lecture and telling off about putting your 100 and 50,000% into everything that you do because you're not going to just get by by looking pretty and you know mm. using your talent which again at the time I don't think I was that talented you know in my head I'm thinking oh, I was good but you know it wasn't incredible and then yeah I think after that conversation I went on a score I think like 11 goals in like six games or something and I won my first like awards not the participation okay. trying awards it was their first like player player of the year award um you know, got top goal scorer, stuff like that. And that's like, okay, all right, now I figured it out. Trying hard. And so since then, I, yeah, I managed to get, like I mentioned to you before, three or four trials here and there. Um, you know, I think my first, uh, my first big trial would have been Leicester yeah. uh, and seeing the difference in quality. And then, you know, went to Liverpool briefly for like a week. And then, you know, my last team I played was at Wimbledon. Uh, and again, I've got to give you know, thanks to Dave Bassett, who's one of the guys who used to me when I first gone so again that was a massive honor to have somebody like that to like yeah not bad yeah <laughs> so, yeah so that was a big thing but i uh, definitely it was a massive massive um punch in the face when you get to that academy level when you yeah. look at it from the Sunday league i mean everyone has that experience but for me i went you're just mind blown and everyone is better than you that's how yeah. i felt everybody everybody uh, how how far back are we talking like now um what was that 10 years, I'm, years? I'm, skipping, I'm skipping a few years now. I think it would have been like 15, 16, so maybe like 10 years ago. Okay. You know, and at the time, like, there was nobody looking like me playing as well. Mm. So, you know, you had no one to come, you know, compare yourself to. And yeah, I definitely was, and I definitely tried to have that arrogance about me where not like telling everyone I was good, but I tried to have that, you know, Ronaldo type, Messi type kind of, like, when I get on the pitch, look like you act like you're the best, look like you're the best. But then when you get run around, run circles around by a guy who's half your size, who's got the foot skills of like somebody, you know, it's, 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 it's really hard. Um, so yeah, I don't want to keep droning on for too long, but yeah, no, that was my like first big step into it. And then, um, yeah, around 17, uh, my family relocated to the United States. And at oh. the time I just, you know, with GCSEs and, you know, I wasn't playing for an academy and kind of was almost dead. And then the idea was to play, you know, uh, go pro through, through uh, the uh, college system because at the time there wasn't the academy. Yeah. And this is another big thing I saw players as well. I didn't play long as it was pro. That's, that's, what I, that's what I my head was at. I didn't care. Obviously, I want to play football. Obviously, I want to win the Champions League. Obviously, I want to win the World Cup or whatever it is. But it wasn't to me. You know, I remember telling my dad like early on, I was like, you know, I don't care if I make a teacher's salary play football. At least I'm playing football. Yeah. I think that that mentality is what you need to have. Uh, to and, you know, and you still might not make it. <laughs> right? So... Um, so yeah, again, went to went to try to go to uni. I, you know, struggled when I moved over because I moved over such a weird time. It was halfway through my AS level, trying to find a team, trying to figure out if system worked. And yeah, to cut a long story short, uh, I got injured around 19, and then I stopped playing. Um, so the, the kind of dream was over at that point. Um, so yeah, that's 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 the playing part. So I, I'll let you ask more questions. I don't want to. No, I mean it's a conversation at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Your journey is about you. So obviously, you stopped playing at 19. It happens. Does it, does it, is it automatic route to, to the agent side or do you go through different ventures before you so, try to find this? Again, this was never my... I had the idea at 19 when I, when I got injured. Uh, that is this when the idea of what I'm doing came about. And again, I think one of the things I did miss out in speaking to was, and sorry, just now, is the... When I left, I think it was Leicester, and they said you need to get bigger. Okay, yeah. They were... You know, I didn't know how to do it. You know, you know, my family were like everything I said. I, I tried to do. They would support. You know, and I told you about this. Watching the Rocky movies, trying like these crazy, quick, get strong, quick things, and sprinting and lifting. And you know, 
again, whether it's an Asian stereotype, I'm not sure, but you know, being careful when you go to the gym, like I didn't really bench till I was 17 or 18. Mm. So, you know, not, not really sure how to get fit in that way was something that, that I struggled with. You know, I tried different things, but I'd, I'd do well, on, you know, I'd build up my body, but then my, I'd get calf strains. I'd sort out my quads by the get hamstring pull. You know, whatever it was, I was getting, there was something that wasn't quite right about what I was doing. Just I didn't know. Um, and then when I, when I came to America, though, they love this. This country, if anything, knows how to its physical fitness. Strength and conditioning is like it's next level, and I think that's what I learned here. And I think that's marrying those two understandings: the football understanding and the physical understanding yeah. has been has been really helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I mean, it wasn't automatic. I mean, when I lost something football, it was it was it was horrible. Like I just thought the one thing I'm supposed to do, not can't do it now. You know, whichever power it was stopping from doing it, I couldn't do it. So, you know, to stay in the game, I, I worked for a non-profit initially. That was a football charity around here, which was fantastic. Staying in the game kept you sane. Yeah. And then my third year, uh, my sister actually started the very first girls team at uh, the high school I attended for a year. I'm looking for a coach. And it was my, th- yeah, my third year. So I literally went over. I was like, have you got a coach? Went, no. So that was it. I started coaching. And then the love came back almost. You know what I mean? It was just, yeah. that was it. And then from there, uh, you know, I did two seasons while I was at university. I left, uh, went to work in international tax uh, for five, six months. And then, you know, not knowing that was not, this, for whatever reason, you know, you, you know, again, I think the biggest thing I think this has helped me do, you know, this whole journey is really just, just lean into who you are. So I'm trying to yeah. be something else. Just stop. Because it's like, you know, I always say I, could do, I can do 10,000 different things. I mean, you know, everyone thinks that. Everyone wants to be the, you know, the Superman. You can't do it, and you know I think I've learned to lean into it, who I am, and, and that's what it was. It's like leaning into the idea that uh, I wanted to create initially uh, a platform for footballers uh, to get recognised, and that's how I described it. I was like, oh, I want to create a platform. I want to call it something new. I uh, wanted the app, some sort of Apple type idea. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and I and I, I told and I, the first you know first person I told about it, well, I had a couple of friends we used to talk about how we want to have this on on on. We want to have this kind of thing on on part of the company. We want to have this and this and this. Um, but the main thing for me was uh, the physical side of it. I wanted to make sure that we had a um, uh, sports science aspect and, and a strength conditioning aspect. And, you know, I spoke to a lot of people about it, like my cousin who's uh, a doctor in, in the Premier League and, you know, uh, Lewis who's now on board with us, who's a sports scientist um, and, you know, a lot of different people. How do we incorporate this? And so, you know, I told you, I think when we first spoke, I started in India and my idea was this, it was to gear this towards Indian players. Okay. There's, you know, literally, that's my background. Punjabi, you know, grew up, you know, speaking you know, to culture, speaking Punjabi, you know, we were Indian boys in England, right? That's like Indian, an Australian boy, and my sister as well, um, you know, Indian kids in England and uh, a lot of us. Um, but I, I wanted to focus on us. I was like, there's nobody there, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't like, again, you know, anyone, anyone who's Asian, like Pakistani, Indian, yeah. Bangladeshi, whatever, nobody looking like us playing. Um, so I started off in India and I worked at, I wouldn't work, but I, I kind of researched at Jamshedpur, which is an ISL team run by Tata. And there I met with uh, Steve Kopp and Wally Downs. And Wally Downs, again, was really helpful. And he's like, yeah, look, you just want to, you know, try, try to explain what I was trying to do. And he's like, all right, so an agent. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I hate that word. But that's what I wanted. That was, that's what it was. And again, leaning into, leaning into it. Like, all right, cool. You're right. I'm an agent. And so that's how I started. So I came back. And this is an initial sports group, you know, was created and the scout, develop, represent uh, kind of model was, was what I was going for. So identifying the right talent, developing them physically. So, you know, giving them a hand with uh, the physical uh, uh, improvement and then represent them at a professional level. So that's how it was kind of the quickest way. I hope I'm not taking too much of your time. But nah, that's the nah, nah, nah. Um, and that's what we're, we're trying to do. And so it's actually like, you know, two, we're two years old today. So it's a good day to on, on your uh, on your on your podcast so you're two years old today and uh, just kind of it's a good time to reflect on what we're trying to build and what we have done um obviously you want to be further ahead than we are and you know that's, you know that's always the case you're always trying to grow big you're trying to always reach further and further yeah but you know so far I've done a lot of work we're proud of and then obviously hopefully now from now on in this next year a lot more work we can be proud of as well so no nah, that's brilliant like obviously uh, agents do come with stereotypes, same as players come with stereotypes, and same as coaches come with stereotypes. It's just it's a, it's a natural thing. But like you said, you you didn't like the, the like the label agent. Why no. was that? Well, why didn't you like that label? 
I think again, just because we, you know, agents get that bad rap of they're out for your money. They're not really looking out for themselves. You know, you hear the stories about, and, and again, these are people that I do respect, like Mina Raula, you know, Paul Jimenez. These guys are monsters. Like a, their business acumen is incredible. Um, but then you hear pundits and former footballers and, you know, whoever, and, you know, even Kia Drabchan recently did a, a, a thing with Gary yeah. Neville where he talked about Tevez, right? Yeah, I saw that. And again, he's massively accomplished and they've helped get these players to where they want to go. Um, and, and another example as well, Raheem Sterling with his agent and they were kind of talking about him calling the shots. And all that. You know, as your kid growing up, that's your, you, 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 you know, and I, like you say, footballing side, I was like, oh, stay away from that. But then, actually, it's you look at it deeper, and now I'm in that situation where I'm, I am that that person. You you kind of get understanding as to why they're necessary, and you know, and like you said, it's going to be positive, negative to everybody, mm. right? If I wasn't a footballer, uh, and if I wasn't a football player, and I was a tennis player, and I looked at footballers, I may have the same thing. I may go, oh, you know, make too much yeah. money. Yeah, you know, they, they do parties and everything. But having seen that side and experiencing it, you then you sit you're in their shoes. It's tough, man. It's a tough job. Trying ah, to, you I can know, imagine. I can tough imagine. Job to, like you know, work with players and you know, and players are dependent. You know, we got a lot, a lot of players. We have very, very smart kids. But you know, and they, you know, they, ha- they. I'm sure if they really wanted to, you know, they could. Do this, you know, they could go into the agency as well once their career is over. You know, when they're 30 or 40 years old. But you know, at the time, at the moment, you know, they should be worrying about contracts or endorsements or how much, you know, what this, what this means in my, in my, uh, in, you know, my pay stub or whatever. Like, yeah. they, they shouldn't have to worry about that. That's not, that's not why we're here is to make sure, all right, listen, we'll explain this to you, no problem. But then you go train and I'll figure this out. And then, you know, it's a partnership. You do your bit, I do my bit. And then we have dinner afterwards and we'll talk about it. You know, that's how mm. it should be. But it, it should be very transparent. And, you know, like I said, the, the agent term, for me, it was, you know, until literally two years ago, I still didn't, I still sometimes don't use it. You know, mm. sometimes, even sometimes, I just have to kind of just get over it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it is what it is. It, is, it, what it is, is what it is. That is the job. But like you said, I think it's about how you do the job. Because I go yeah. back and I take it back to coaching. Um, you could be a dad who's not got a badge and go and coach a Sunday league side. And you're a coach. Right. <laughs> You're, 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 that is what you are. That's what you're doing. You're coaching. And yeah. you could be Liverpool's first team coach and you, you're a coach. That yeah. It's just experience and doing it the correct way is the important bit here. And I think that's what you're saying when you're saying that agents should be transparent. Where, yeah. yeah, absolutely. In a sense where you're, you're kind of, you're not working for the player, but you're working with the player. Yeah, and, and, and at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, again, you know, I'm nowhere near as accomplished as anything. I mean, we, we know that's that is the, the the aim of the game is to get as as far as you know to do as much as we can with like, you know, with what uh, Mino's done and you know and, and those different agents and even agents we work with, like you know, I work with a lot of agents as well. I talk to them so much, and it's fantastic to see that. I mean, you know, we're not we're not in that level yet, but yes, you know, at the end of the day, on paper, you're employed by the player. Mm. Players ask you to represent him. That's your job, you know, at the end of the day. And yeah, if we can create a, as much of a partnership as possible, that would be ideal. Because again, you know, you know, there are, you know, there are always things you do like pro bono or something, you know, where you just help, you know, we, we, we always talk to players and we've helped players without necessarily, in term, not in terms of getting into academies or trials or contracts or anything, but just giving them advice. Like you always want to just help anybody. I mean, it's always what mm. I want to do. But yeah, at the end of the day, if you don't do your job, you don't get paid. <laughs> So, you, so, so yeah, so again, you know, I think there's a, and, and again, that's, that's what I struggled with initially where I was like, I don't talk my money with these, with these people early because I don't want to scare anybody off. But if you just are confident in what you're doing and what you're bringing to the table and how you're doing the job, then there should be no issue. Mm. You know, so the, the transparency thing, yes, for sure. And like, again, like, you know, agents are not, you know, their job isn't, isn't supposed to be transparent with the media necessarily. Yeah, yeah. So you get, so if, but they don't say anything, media roasts you. Mm. If you say something, media's like, why is the agent talking? <laughs> why is he on Sky Sports? Mm. Well, if you attack his friend, which, you know, like Kia and Tevez, they've been known each other for years. You attack his mate, he's going to come on and say something. Mm. Whether he's right or wrong is irrelevant. He's, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. their main job is to be transparent with the player and the family, period. So if we can do that, 
it doesn't matter what the background noise is. It doesn't matter what we what so and so is saying about so and so. It's hard to ignore because, like I said, I'm not at that level yet where people are talking about me. Maybe after your podcast, I might be. But you know, <laughs> it, it's it's hard you to know. you know even, you never yeah you never know. But you know, even with like players we're looking to work with with their families, you know, like youngsters like 17, 18 year olds, even their parents like, what happens if you get injured? What are you going to do? And you have to take that, like, okay, you know, I'm not his doctor, but at the same time, I'll, I'll do everything you can to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, so you, you're always going to get the negative side when it comes to this type of stuff. It's just, yeah. it is what it is. You're never going to be. Dive, I just want to dive into the, like, the agent's role in a sense, yeah. because <laughs> that is, I mean, I've never really, I've always <laughs> thought of it from like a kind of like a um, outside perspective, which is, right, my job is to get you a contract and that's it. Like, you know, and if you get a contract, I get paid. How, 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 what is the like a day to day life of, of, of an agent? Like, how do, what, what do you do? So, yeah, so for, from, from, for what we do is a little bit different, right? Because, um, you know, most of us, a lot of us on the phone, you know, you're talking with potential players, clubs, you know, other officials trying to under ascertain what clubs need, you know, where the player you have will fit. Um, just as from a pure representative perspective. And obviously having the, the, the different um, aspects that we incorporate in-house, like the sports science stuff and, uh, you know, and uh, match data that we do as well, which is where we yeah. basically, when players send video and we agree to work with them, any game time we have, we go through their games, we do a full player analysis and it's very, you know, it doesn't sound as crazy as it is, just very simple, you know, writing the data like you would, you'd see in like Opta or something, we do it all manually and then we talk to the player about it. You know, so obviously one it was not as organized as we wanted to be, but it's, you know, as we're building this up, that's what we're doing. And, you know, so for me, I'm kind of looking at me personally, I'm doing a lot of different things and, you know, fingers in different pots and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of purely representative side, it's essentially making sure you build the right relationships with the right people. And mm -hmm. you're then, you know, talking to, again, like I said before, you don't be throwing um, play, uh, all your players at every team that you can find and then just finding out what sticks. Because then uh, that can that's you can smell that the team's gonna be like, well, I just it's sitting everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's essentially like I say, I repeat on the phone, building relationships with people. Obviously, in the coronavirus times, it's a bit more difficult mm. trying to take people for dinner and having and understanding what they need and what they what they like. Um, but it, it's it it depends day to day. Things can change. A player might come to you who's absolutely fantastic. Who's like, I need someone, I need some help. Or you might a player might leave you or something. You know, things 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 happen. Um, but for us, we've been quite lucky where, you know, build the right relationship with the players and their families and they've given us a lot of faith to do our job right. So, you know, and that's what we're trying to do is make sure we're keeping them in the loop, what they're doing to keep fit, what they're doing to keep better, which is what our strength and conditioning guys do um, and keeping them fit and workouts and so on. They're, they're doing their job. Yeah. Right? And then from there, it's like, okay, you know, sometimes it's slow days, sometimes there's nothing to do because you've texted everybody, you've called everybody and you're waiting for responses. Mm. Um, but then the days where you, you're just not, so you don't stop talking, which, as you can tell, I obviously don't. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it, it, it really depends day to day. And, and again, you know, we're always looking for creative field stuff to brand the players. You know, so we're talking to brands and, and maybe, you know, sometimes hopefully soon foundations and, you know, align the players. Because at the end of the day now, whether people like it or not, players are not just, not just footballers anymore. They yeah. are, I mean, footballer is first and foremost, yeah. right? But they, they are, I, they are people's idols. Like, you know, Somewhere in some corner of the world, there's a player who's, you know, it's a kid who's got X, Y player on their wall. Like, I want to be like this guy. Mm. And, you know, and so it's our job as well to help brand that positive image, imagery in whichever way we can. So that's also an exciting part too, where, yeah, of course. and particularly with a lot of, like I said, most of our players are Indian origin. That's an exciting part to, to look at. It's like, all right, cool. Now, is that, you know, is that deliberate? Is that, are you just looking after your own in that sense? Or are you... Uh, gonna branch out as well as you get bigger oh well, yeah no, I mean, was that was that was that that initial stage was that just the comfortability factor of it well working with india working with, with yeah our own, yeah no just okay again just from me being the background that i am i always wanted to do that at least mm -hmm. help our own right but now it's never been it's never been exclusive yeah it's a specialty so we have players who are indian who are brilliant and, I, and they have the same mentality i look at at the end of the day you could be you know Indian, African, American, whatever. But if you don't have the mentality, I don't want to work with you. And mm. I'm sure the same way they feel with me. If I don't, we don't share the same ambition, then there's no point. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So again, it is. A, it is. A, it was a case of 
two things really no one's doing it i'm sure there are people out there trying and there are a lot of indian uh, different agents who are indian working with players and there are indian agents working with players in india um and obviously me with the ambition that we've had and you know what we, we were trying to do is change that where not just have one here and there every blue moon where mm. there's indian asian pakistani Bangladeshi player once every five years it's kind of i mean like a consistent level for, yeah. for, for, for us just growing up with it not seeing it and it just seems like really obvious why we don't have it um but at the end of the day if in the next 10 in the next you know five six months all my players aren't indian i'm not going to be yeah you know, we play. it is what it is but yeah it was that that is because it's like i said that's how we start that's how i started the vision was like i want to see i want to help indian players like i want you know you look at you know mohammed salah and you know egyptians had a great reputation in football anyway they had players you know mm. one or two every year coming in the premier league or in switzerland or wherever they were playing but then mo exploded mm. into this incredible you know he, he's, he's like a messy level almost mm. in terms of his exposure right yeah. so it is amazing to see and now and he looks like me you know he would you know if i had a fro he looks similar but you know that's that was the first step it's like oh wow a muslim player like obviously you know mm. There are, there are, you know, for Muslim boys and, 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 and kids, change everything. Yeah. Right? So it's like, you know, it's, it's fantastic. And like I said, you know, even me, like, you know, a lot, I grew up with a lot of friends who are Muslim. And for them, they talk about it. It's massive. It's massive. Like, it's huge. Like, you know, people with beards can actually, like, do things. You know, it's, it's not to be silly and not to be joking, but it's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. So same thing with Indians, where there's... Hindus, Punjabi, West, Sikh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, but at the same time, we need to have that. It's about time that, you know, we, look, we looked at the footballers, not looked at the doctors and accountants. I'm yeah. sure other people who from coming from different areas who have certain stereotypes want to break that too. Absolutely. But that, again, it was just for me, growing up, I always wanted to either be the first one or help the first ones. Yeah. Right? That was like a big thing. It was like, because oh, I, you know, when I was playing, it was like, oh, he could be one of the few Indian players playing. Mm. Cool. I'm not going to do that. Cool. I'll help other people. How important do you think it is for us as South Asian community to have a global superstar? I do. I think it's huge. I think it's. I think it's. I was actually watching something recently about you know African American culture and having the first black president, having Barack Obama, and uh, you know different opinions are, are, are of him, but he was the first one. And I remember mm. when I was I was in England when he was inaugurated, and you know when you know I'm a black or, you know, African-American, but my dad woke me up four in the morning because you're going to watch this. He woke, woke all my, my sister, and my brother woke us all up and he was going to watch this guy speak because he is the first black president and it happened in your lifetime. And that in itself is an, is an extraordinary achievement. Mm. So in the same way, if we can get one of our players, whether it's, whether it's through mine or not, whether it's Sarpreet Singh Abayan, whether it's one of our boys or whatever, whoever it is, if he, if he or she, because Indian, Indian girls are absolutely f- brilliant at the moment. You got yeah. girl, you know, Rishti Bhakti is in Madrid. Adi Johan was one of the first players to play Indian players period to play in England. Like yeah. incredible. Um, whoever it is, they are then at you know if we have that global Ronaldo level superstar at some point, then we point to our you talk to our kids and go, see, you literally mm. whatever you want. It's not just a saying. You yeah, live, I mean, there's, there's, there's a massive knock-on effect if it happens, you know, because we do, look, don't, don't get it wrong, there are players from South Asian origin playing. They play, they're, they're playing in the league, and they've done, they've done brilliantly to be there, but we've not had a global superstar, and this all stems from, like, obviously, the, I just finished the, see the documentary with Jordan, The Last Dance, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that impact, you know, it's and there is a market. There is a huge business market as well from from professional yeah. level yeah, yeah, yeah. In, the, in, in the in the South Asian origin. Um, so it would have a such a big knock on effect coming down down the pyramid. I think like I think now you've seen changes. I think a lot of you know where you know looking at where the South Asian population is is huge. Obviously Canada, Toronto, Australia, England, South Africa. A lot you know we're everywhere, right? Mm. But you look at. Uh, um, the diff- the, a lot of players now, I think you had, you've had a few people on, you know, from, I think, different South Asian backgrounds who've said that their parents are all for it. And that's changing. 
there's yeah. thing, you're younger parents coming up that's you're going to see changes you know you, you're going to see like i reckon the next 10 15 years you see a lot more kids playing a lot more indian south asian Bangladeshi, pakistani kids playing who are born in england um because as we both know we're, they're always asians are always asian kids are always playing in the street in england and then you get the extra level they're still a little bit there and then once you get to academy there's nobody there mm. <laughs> right so whether that's it's again you know, don't want to get too critical, but you know, there's obviously various reasons. It's it's cultural, it's systematic potentially. Like it's different things have happened, and it is what it is. But I think that impact that that has, where you you know you can say to your kids, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that, and they can you can point to a figure in each mm. industry, right? We know we can be doctors, we know we can be lawyers. Yeah, look at them, you know. And you know, hopefully with Rishi Sunak, you may maybe even prime minister of England. You mm. never know, <laughs> right? which I don't think I would ever see in my lifetime. But it's like now I'm hearing, oh, he's, he's like, I think it's a bet way of saying he's oh, on to do it. And, you know, like that's whatever. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, as you can feel, I'm excited to see the yeah. possibilities of what we could do. It's not just Indians in general. It's every community that's felt, it's not marginalized so much, but it's felt that they couldn't do something. Mm. And, it's a, and, you know, again, you have an Asian superstar that, whether it's a Baljeet thing who goes anywhere and everyone knows who he is, or, you know, you go, you know, I would, I think my, my, I would love to go to Bolivia and see a picture of like a graffiti of, of, of one of our, our boys playing. Yeah. Or our girl playing. That's just, that's it. You know, you, you know, you, you know, you've had the impact on a, on a kid somewhere who was looking to, 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 you know, you want to be that it's at, at the end of the day, you want to be that, that, that figure of inspiration period. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Ronaldo is. That's what MJ is. And Messi, and you know, even LeBron now. Like you know, you've got these global figures that you don't know the sport, but you know who that is. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's what we. And that's what I'd, I'd love to see. But that, obviously, that's a lot of things go into that, right? The marketability of the person. Of course. You know. And that's yeah. where people like you, I guess, come into come into play and get to yeah. show your worth. So we'd like to. Yeah. I mean, that's the plan. That's why. That's why I think it's important that you know our boys get exposure. Again, early, not necessarily. I don't want that to, again, to be very clear, I don't want the non-footballing side to ever, ever overtake the footballing side because yeah. the football is what giving you the po- the possibility of going into the non-footballing side, right? Being a footballer, that's your occupation. Your The money maker is, the fo- at the end of the day, football. And then if you have the, the luxury of being recognised a couple of times with the chippy or going to this, you know, wherever, then it's like, okay, cool. Now we, now we build on that. We build on, mm-hmm. you know, you go and talking to schools or, you know, signing autographs or whatever it is that, you know, you've, you've, you're in a position of power at, at the end of the day. Footballers are all, you know, the top ones, you know, and everyone, but, you know, the Premier League, La Liga, they're in a position where, you know, particularly in those areas, if you go anywhere, you recognise. And that's, that carries the responsibility. Whether yeah. people like, or not. I know there's always, there's always things about, you know, footballers, football, you know, let them do what they want. But at the end of the day, you're in the spotlight. So you have a responsibility to do something. I'm not saying give back or give your money away. But you have responsibility to carry yourself in a certain way. Yeah, and, and you know whether that, that comes with territory. You make hundred grand a week. Don't do silly things. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Just, okay, it, it comes with territory. So yeah, yeah but again, I'm touching on that though. How important are you and our agents and representatives on that side of it as well? Like you know, when when you have a hundred grand player, how important is it for you to keep him in line? Huge. I think I think huge, and I think you know. I'm sure if we if you ever speak to some of my boys as well, that I probably sound like a broken record with them because I'm always getting mad at them for certain little things or you know, you know, trying to inform. Like I've told you before, I've, I've we've spoken to the players, we've had players we wanted to sign but didn't because they didn't show that mentality of if I tell you not to do something like don't drink or don't smoke or don't do this or don't stay out till three in the morning before a game. It's not hard. To, it's not hard to do. Mm. And if that if that's something you can't do, then that's something that's that's awful. That's, you, I'm not mad. I'm not upset. But then you're clearly not trying to. The mentality isn't there. We don't share the same vision. So yeah, I, I, like I said, so far, like I said, my, my, all the players we have are you know, up and coming and growing and and doing well. And I'm sure, like when we get to that level where you have to deal with a player who makes 150 grand a week or whatever, then then yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have. And I think at that point, the relationship is strong enough that we can talk to each other about and say, look, you should be doing this. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm also not their parent. Mm. So there are certain things I can say, and like I'd like, I'd like to, I want to have that, uh, and I'm sure every agent's like that, or have, you know, everyone who wants to, you know, wants to have that relationship where they can go put on my and say, no, don't do that, or, you know, 
it's what you should do invest you know put this money away here and here and that's again that's another part of our job where we help them with that once they have income we can discuss certain things about how they can manage their money as well you know how you know where you know <laughs> what to buy you know eventually like but it's it definitely definitely comes put yeah we, we we have a third party i think it's an obligation me personally i think it's our obligation to make sure that they're in the safer sense right we have to make sure that the, the players and you know when you give a player the 21 22 year old even 300 grand a year it's a lot of money for a 20 year old you know and so sometimes they go oh, i can actually afford that thing with extra zero by all means it's your money but i'll i will i'm gonna say something and be like you know it probably shouldn't but do yeah. you know so there's certain things we can you so know that's, like that's, to that's what it is like you 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 give the advice but you're not it's it's not enforced like it's not you, you have to do this kind of thing yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. Lean, leaning them towards the right way um which is massively important because that was that was leading up to my next question which is how much influence do you play in where they sign um is that solely the decision of the player or again is it the same as what, what you what you would do with their money you just advise them and then let them make the decision and then go with it or same thing yeah very similar i think it, it, as well as well as you know we've had discussion with our players like where do I go next kind of thing at the end of the, and, and this is and this is for any occupation having experienced this type of thing where you're working in a, in a job where you know things aren't necessarily going right mm. and you come home and you're just getting you know depressed is a bit strong but yeah I mean you're getting to that point where it's just like you want to be in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a surrounding where you can thrive not just as a footballer because you're not playing for, and again this is another thing that people forget is footballers aren't playing football all the time mm. it's five hours a day Maybe max. Then they come home. Then they got to do something. Then they got to watch TV. Then they got to relax. Then they got to talk to their families. Then they got to do this. Then they got to sleep. And then they got to wake up, have breakfast, and pay their bills. Then go. Then go to work. It's the same thing. Mm. So end of the day, I want to make sure wherever the play, we we send our players, they're in a situation where they can, you know, they don't feel like they're lonely or they don't feel like you know. And we, and we had the problem. We had this issue when one of our very first players we sent to a, a team. And you know he was there, and it was in, he, he, we had we had emotional conversations like this is so tough. Like I can't see mum, mm. you know, where the conditions are rubbish. And you know, and, and again, I'm gonna keep kind of seesawing here. You do pay your dues as a footballer. You have got to go through the sacrifices. You have got to go through the rungs. Um, but you know, you want to make sure that they're also in the right environment where they can thrive. And some players can thrive in certain environments. Some players can't. So, so for sure, I, we're giving the best advice we can. So, look, I think you should do this. But if a player says that Paris, I think this is where I want to play, then what are you, what are you supposed to say? Yeah. And then at the end of the end of the day, then you know, I never want to say I told you so. But then, you know, if a player wants to to experience that type of, of, of play or environment or whatever, then you, you, you kind of go there. But so far I've been quite lucky with all my boys have been we've had really good discussions about, you know, we usually come to on the same page about everything. Yeah. Right. This, this, the strategy is very similar. Like it's it's very like, okay, you know, particularly with, you know. The laws, like visa laws, particularly. If you've got players in America, I'm not going to just throw you to England. Mm. Probably better off being around mum and dad uh, as long as possible, and then you know playing in that area where they can at least either within a drive or a flight. But it, again, if an opportunity comes about where you have to fly, and that's the only opportunity you want a few, then we go there. But again, it's I think I've been lucky where so far, like I said, we could be younger players that, that we're on the same page, uh, and they understand that they'll they have to play wherever they, they can get an opportunity. And then again, our job is to make sure that they're thriving in it and making sure that, you know, whether it's making friends or, or, you know, having sometimes home cooked meals, whatever, you got to make sure that they, 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 they feel like they're, it's not so alien that they get yeah. sad and, 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 and upset. Cause that's, I, that's, a, that's a big thing. It's close to me where I see, I've seen a lot of big players and media annihilate them. Yeah. Annihilate them like Renato Sanchez is one of the big things. I you know I never met the guy. I'm sure he's great, but it can't be easy playing football from a one season at Benfica as a 17 year old, then winning the Golden Ball, a Golden Player of the Year, you know, Young Player of the Year at the Euros. They're going to buy. I mean, it happened in a year mm. to go from to go from playing in the youth, then being buying Munich 12, 13 months later. I'm sure he didn't speak German at the time. You know, he was old for 30 million pounds. This is what 25 years ago, six years ago. Yeah. And then he goes to Swansea six months later. Mm. Like, what? And then everyone's like, he's rubbish. Of course. He's been uprooted three times in the same year. So, again, I don't know who his management team are. And again, I don't know, you know, and that's, and I'm sure he, and I don't know who it is, but I'm not saying it's their fault. It's nobody's, I mean, it is what it is. But that type of thing I want to avoid. Okay. Possible. Mm. Where you're, 
uprooting constantly like they're machines and then you put this you know you're not like an mri scanner where you just take one from one hospital and put in the other and it works exactly the same <laughs> that. right you got to where's he living where was he living in Swansea? was he near the shops mm. like was he you know near a bus line like did he have a translator like he has to speak three languages you know it's just it's crazy it's like i look at that scenario and i go oh my god like, i'm getting a headache yeah like i can't i'm 18 i moved country at 17 with my family and that was hard enough Mm. And I had, and I was still going to school, and I still had my siblings with me, you know, my younger siblings to talk to when I came home, and my mum and dad, and that was hard, man. So, 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 so from that personal experience, like, I don't. Yeah, want to and I think I think that's massive in in your sense because you've got that personal experience. Um, right. You know, you you have uprooted yourself, you have moved, and you know, you you also travel, you also have to go and fly into meetings and stuff like that. So you yeah. kind of get it, and you've played as well, so you get it from that angle yeah. as well. You know, you've yeah. seen the academy system, and obviously you didn't make it pro, but you've seen you've you know, now talked to players who are pro. You've you've you mentioned likes of Dave Bassett, Steve Koppel, these guys who have been in that field. I'm sure, like anyone would, you would pick their brain and um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. With, with Dave, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so that and 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 those those um, experiences that they share with you almost become <clears> your experiences, and then you can learn of them and then be like, well, I've got to avoid these and I've got, and you're still going to get things wrong because that's just natural human instinct. You'll Absolutely. always get things wrong, but I think you've got it, you've got it the right way. And, and, and that's refreshing because like I said, the normal stigma associated to agents is, yeah, these men are just taking everyone's money and, uh, there, and there, are some like that. And there are some like that, like in any industry that people who are doing a thing for the money and doing it for the wrong reasons, there's always yeah. going to be that. But so I think what's, like your, what's, what's your take on, like young kids having agents because it seems to be becoming the norm in England where kids as young as 13, 14 have an agent associated with them and you know it's yeah well that's probably that's again agents uh, you know all the different you know, FIFA rules that you can't you know really represent players under the age of 16 mm. as a thing I say so you know but but yeah I mean I'm sure you know as, as a helping hand to the families I mean you know it's it's, it's a hard one really I, th mm. I think I, I just from a purely, I don't really agree with it under 16. I, I don't just, I think, you know, I think uh, when Dinesh was on your podcast, he said something interesting about, you know, uh, certain, I think, he, I mean, was it on your podcast? I think he said something like, you know, when you're playing, you still want to have fun kind of thing. Yeah. You don't want to enjoy football. Um, and as a 14 year old, you're not, I don't, you don't want to muddle that, that innocent brain <laughs> with, mm. you know, with talks of age, because, you know, more often than not, you, you get a big head. Yeah, 14, or, or, and even with players now, like 20, 22, 23, 24, like I'm in my agent. I've got to talk to my people, you know, mm. or like, with my life. You know, there's 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 a that element to it. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I think having advice is absolutely fine from whoever, um, and you know, the the agents can help, but I think again, that's why that term it needs to be like there needs to be the you know, intermediary is a, is a good term because it's it, you know the word like i said the word agent has a stigma mm. that when a 14 year old or 13 year old hears it like oh you're just looking at me they think of like not air jordans <laughs> or yeah. you know and not everyone i'm not I don't mean to generalize every single person but yeah of course more often than not happens you know mm. so, so yeah I mean, for me personally you know Things might, you know, things might change in the future. You never know. That like, it becomes really important that you you talk to the families early on because it's just the way the game is. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. That you're, you know, I'm sure agents and scouts, like just like scouts, do monitor players at 12, 13, 14. So when they're ready to, when they have them, they see their brains a bit more developed, and they go, right, cool. This is what we, yeah. we can help. You. Um, so you kind of like, you kind of like know that they're about, and you, you've got to, but you're not representing them. You're yeah, just, I'm you're, just in the, you're just in the framework. You see, you can see that. So basically, yeah, you said your what was your slogan, scout. Yeah, like we, we're scout, we're scouts, right? So we, yeah. Like I said, I'm never gonna. Oh, you know, we. I mean, I don't think you know, we we don't speak to players that young, mm. ever directly, and I don't think we have here spoken to any of the families of the players that young. Mm. But like I said, I'm sure that it's like just like scouts in like the big clubs. I mean, I'm sure Jaden Sancho was seen very young, and I'm sure mm. he had a thing going on, and you know. For, for for stellar players that will happen early on at 12 it'll be seen like this guy's so much better than everybody else I've ever seen I've got to talk to his family see what they're doing and you know that, that that's okay but like I said just for me personally I just don't I don't agree with it at that at that age I think it, you know every, you know 
yeah, I, I, just, I, I could talk for hours about it's that. More I think... of a, it's more because I had, a, I, I had a few conversations with a couple of players who, who all said the same thing pretty much, which was at 16 years old, they got their independence. And okay. it came too early because they came out of a structured life into a world of unknown, you know, right. and they didn't really have anybody to walk them through it. And then they ended up having to make decisions that one of the players decided to turn down a scholar at a, league, at a championship club because right. he'd had enough. Um, and the reason for that was is it was all so structured. And when he came out, it was like, no, I just want to be with my mates. And he'd been in the academy system from a young age. And, and, and right. when, he, when he came out at 16, he was just done with it. And now he can finally make the decision by himself. He was like, I don't, I don't want the scholar. Yeah. Did he live to regret it later? 100% you're going to. But in that moment, I can understand being a 16-year-old and be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, and, then, and, and that's where that conversation has with your parents. Or mm. again, at 16, where you're allowed to have an agent or at least somebody's yeah. conversation. was like, actually, mate, listen... If you don't do it, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen any other way. And you know, and that's and that's when you and again, weed out is probably again a bit more negative, but that's when you determine if you want it or not. Mm. And that's when and that's why like that's, and that, that's why speaking to players between sixteen and nineteen, it's good because you get to see where they're at. You know, mm. at sixteen you're still in a little bit innocent. You're like, oh, I want to, I want to be. Blah, blah. And then by seventeen, you're like, oh, it's hard. Mm. And there's no shame in going. This is not for me. Yeah, you know, and that's that's, that's where the transparency thing. I talk about it all the time. I said, just be honest. You know, we've had players we talk to, we call me, and he's. I remember we, this is last April, and and I remember he's talking to him. And I was like, you don't want it clearly, and that's okay. It's absolutely fine. Mm. Don't let you know. Stop wasting your time. Not forget mine. Your own time. Worrying about this. You know, you, you know, you're worrying about this, and you've got your family and this and this. And mate, I would prefer making a decision for you, because in the, the day. If your heart's not in it, I can, I can see it. And I can see it. And you can see it. You can tell. You can always tell. Very obviously. And I'm sure it was similar with, you know, when I was growing up, I'm sure my heart was, I was always in it, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily do the right things or know how to do the right things. And that was pretty obvious too. Um, so, so yeah, you, you, you know, I think that that's why 16 is a good age. 17 is a good, good age, like, at least for me personally. And, you know, other agents will probably say, nah, it's too, too old. You know, by that point, they've already got like, other people looking at them. But that's just the way we're working at the moment. Um, and, and it's to the on at the end of the day. I mean, you build your reputation and you and you go that way. I mean, I'm sure your ambitions, which I'm going to touch on now. What is your ambition for the day? Say the next five years. Where where do you aim to be? Because I, I assume right now all your players are um, on that side. Yes, yeah, so you got some players. Yeah, so players not most of the players on the other side of the world. And we got you know working with trying as as of right now working with certain players that we're trying to get either. Uh, in Europe or in England at the moment so just kind of because I, I started everything in England mm. uh, and brought everything across America just because the, the growing opportunity of the MLS and USL was something I didn't want to pass up and having spent age of 17 to 22 here uh, you know my family's all settled here as well it, it made a lot of sense to be in this side of the world as well because obviously my partner Roy is in England so he's, he's there so we, have, we do have we are covering both bases yeah uh, but just the opportunity to grow with the MLS was, was huge. And the Canadian Premier League too, which is only its second season now. Uh, and, you know, they, they've got things, they, they're doing things quite well as well. Um, so, yeah, ambitions for the next five years. I mean, for me, I want to be as, as good as I possibly can at this job. You know, as good as I can, you know, managing everything that we're trying to do. Um, and in terms of players, you know, we want to be that go-to uh, agency, which I can say now confidently, um, that is known for its ability to be extremely honest and, 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 and efficient at its job. Mm. And that's for any player. And like I said, the, the specialty for Indian players always be close to my heart because that's who I am. You know, I'm, I'm Indian, Indian, British Indian kid. You know, it's always been a, 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 an a ambition of mine to see people like who look like me. Like, and like I said, not just Indian, the South Asian in general to be succeeding. We want to be that go-to. Yeah company that's like oh yeah he's not he's like he's great because you know he talks to the mum and dad first or he talks to you know he, he really really wants to know the player before anything um and then he can actually deliver on his promises and again i don't never guarantee anything but i always guarantee i can do my 150 percent more so that's 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 all i want really and i think, if I you, think that's, that's the most important thing to be yeah fair. yeah 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 i mean obviously i have my own ambitions as like as where we want to be in terms of financially in terms of what players we have and of course but overall at the end of the day that does not come 
unless we're doing our job as well as we can and you know displaying the honesty that we can so and all that just obviously for players who might be watching this who may need representation yeah. you know because i think the viewers on this vary from young players to sure. older players and there may be even players that are ex pros who are in the national league who don't have any representatives right. um, what what message would you be sending to these guys and and what yeah what would you say to them in that sense though so, oh, in terms of what though in terms of what in terms of representation in terms of football in general both both uh, it depends. I think again, depending on the scenario, I think the only thing that can't change is the mentality, right? Like I think that's the huge, that's the biggest thing. Your aim has to constantly be the next step. Your and, and doing the right things. If you're doing the right things consistently, things will happen for you. Mm. You know, I know there are exceptions that that doesn't happen. There's always there's always an exception to that rule where you work hard and things always some things fall apart, unfortunately. But for everybody else, if you're doing the right things and putting yourself in the right scenario, particularly particularly for uh, young pros, you know, particularly young players. You know, it's 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 a, it's an op- the, the these opportunities in playing football. I think don't come very often, but at the same time, there are we're quite lucky in football where it's a very well known sport uh, that there are a lot of leagues out there that can pay you to play football. Um, and it's about putting yourself in the right scenario all the time. You know, if there's a if there's a camp here or uh, if there's a scouting thing here, do it. Mm. You know, and you know if you have the means to do it. And again, some sometimes these places charge money. Which I don't necessarily agree with, but if you can do it, go do it. And then with with, with and again with with current pros, ex pros, again mentality can't change. You know, I have friends who are who are coming towards the end of their career or some people who are ex pros, and that mentality doesn't change. It's mm. like yeah, I'm still consistently trying to do the next best thing and keep myself fit and and the opportunity and and that's the other thing, the confidence of the opportunity will come around. That that is. That is that is something that we you know play need to drill into the players at a young age. Like just just be patient because you know younger younger generation is impatient. Mm. Younger generation wants their Nike endorsement tomorrow. Younger generation wants their contract to be five hundred thousand dollars tomorrow. Not gonna happen. Mm. Absolutely gonna happen. So be patient and you'll get there. So that's 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 really the message I got. And what about for those guys who might be looking for representatives? And uh, how do they go about contacting you? Give us a shout. Uh, you know, we got, uh, yeah, you know, via social media. I think it's a social media is a powerful tool. You know, we're on Instagram, we're on uh, LinkedIn, all these different things. And, you know, uh, our email's there. Like, you know, it's very open. I'm always, I think that's the thing. We'll never say, we'll never just not look at you, what you send me. You know, we've had, you know, we first, when we first did our social media stuff last January, we had I don't know, 150, 200 different messages and 200 videos. And, you know, we're not going to be able to help all of you. Mm. But by by all means, we'll have a look, and we'll always make sure we'll, we'll look, we'll look, and we'll be very honest. Mm. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other agencies out there are the same way. But that for us, you know, we're easily contactable via social media or email. And um, I think my most, I think our, my our, our company, the company email to send all the videos to is on Instagram or initialsports.com. It's all the stuff there. You can always send it whichever way. But yeah, I mean, we're always willing to help anybody who needs who needs it and is willing to 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 work the way we we do as well with that ambition and mentality. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, the passion for it as well. So. Brilliant. And I'll be putting your socials down there anyway. Um, yeah. so pe- pe- people, sure. people have your socials there. Any um, questions? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And guys, genuinely, I say it, I've been a skeptic for, about agents all my life. And after speaking to Paris and just seeing his, and I've had a, I've had a great two hour conversation with him like a week or so ago where we were just talking off the record and, and I kind of, I got the vision and I got what he's trying to do and I've almost got a newfound respect for for the way he does things. I'm not necessarily saying all agents are like him. I'm, I'm not saying that at all and, and sometimes the stereotype is true. Um, but with this guy, I know what you're getting. You're getting genuine in me with the key, that word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it means a lot, man. It means a lot. We try and do things again in the right way and, you know, the, Everyone who works with me, you know, uh, partners, S and C guys, everyone, you know, even our new interns come on board. Every, everyone is, it's. We're, we're, I'm lucky to work with people I am, and obviously, like my my mom and dad, my sister, and my brother, you know, just very lucky to have the growing up with that mentality. So as long as we, you know, we have, the, we have we're lucky to have the right surroundings and me that that can help us drive drive the, the vision forward. So I'm I'm very lucky in that way. Hundred percent. And guys, I'm gonna be after. After the, this podcast, I'll be um, getting my contract over myself 
<laughs> I'll, be, I'll be signing that up so I'm going to be the first coach to be represented as well so <laughs> I'm joking I don't want no agent I don't Sammy Disco don't worry no yeah 100% <laughs> um, but now nah, listen it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here um, thank, you much. thank you so much for sharing that journey because it's something that first and foremost like I say with all my guests it's a lesson for me and then for the viewers, um, the whole purpose of the podcast is that it's networking. It's trying to share stories for people who are doing good things. Not everyone in football is playing football. There's people in football doing so many different roles. And I think, I think that what I'm finding is we all lean towards the footballer. So all of us are making the footballer um, in our own given way. Absolutely. Um, and even something like this, it, it shares that story. And maybe prevents people from making certain mistakes and, you know, give them advices that they may not have got somewhere else. So that's the reason for this. So thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you very much for having me. I mean, yeah, just a quick thing on that as well, just to say, you know, with coaches and everything, I think, you know, that's a really well put. You say you, we're all trying to make the football. That's, that's all, I think that's the aim of the guest. At the end of the day, any, everybody's purpose was coach, physio, agent, you know, manager, whatever it is, that the aim, that should be moulding the footballer. That's a very, very good way you put that. I, really, uh, I think it's a really good, really good. Uh, I'm going to steal that from you now and use it. No problem. Um, I just but, made that up right now. I might need to copy but, right now. <laughs> no, but it's, it's true. It's a, it's a really, really good point. Like I said, thank you for, for having me. It's, you know, it's always good fun to do stuff like this. Yeah, definitely. 100%. And it won't be the last time. We'll de- once this quarantine is over, once I'm in a nice little studio for myself, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, proper sponsorship and that. Because you know, this is like, <laughs> I think this is, I'm touching nearly 30 episodes that I've recorded now. Um, in the space of eight weeks so it's not a bad little turnover so i must be doing something right because viewers keep coming <laughs> no thank you very much i really appreciate it no 100 percent. and guys like i said i'll put his socials down there my social and if you need um any questions from him go to him directly and if you can't go to him directly for any any reason come to me and i'll pass the questions on i'm happy to do that um you know what to do with the video like share and subscribe it i'll see you guys in a couple of days for another episode until then Peace.